fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? The Lone Ranger and Tonto had camped not far from the town of Grant's Pass. They had not been in this vicinity for many months and had looked forward to meeting several old friends. Tonto had gone ahead to the community, and when he returned to camp, he brought with him a recent copy of the weekly paper, the Grant's Pass Journal. I'm glad you brought it, Tonto. It'll give me a chance to learn what's been happening. Mm, there plenty happened, Kimasabi. Town all changed. All changed? Uh-huh. What do you mean by that, Tonto? Well, you look at paper. Right. Right there. Published by Ace Wells. Tonto, that's odd. I wonder if that's the man who was running the cafe the last time we were in town. Ah, uh, same fella. Him still run cafe. And the newspaper? That's right. Him run all the town. I can't believe Bob Turner sold the journal. He was a good newspaper man. Uh, and him good fella, too. Yes, oh, look at this, Tonto. Sheriff Martin died suddenly when he fell from a second-story window of the cafe. Uh, me, no. I didn't know Sheriff Martin. Jack Bates was sheriff the last time we were here. Well, him die and fall from edge of cliff. Another sheriff also die. Another sheriff? That's right. Fellow named Longworth. Him killed in gunfight. Then Martin made sheriff. He was killed accidentally, I suppose. Three sheriffs in less than a year... Come on, Tonto. Uh-huh. And what we do? We're going to Grant's Pass. We're going to find Bob Turner. Well, him still live in the same White House. You found that out, huh? Uh-huh. Good enough. Hey there, fellow. We're traveling as soon as I cinch up. Oh, did you get a chance to talk to Bob Turner? No. No, me not see him. I want to know why he sold the journal, and I want to know more about the deaths of three lawmen. I didn't like the way Wills ran his cafe. Now it looks as though he's expanded his activities. You ready, Tonto? Uh-huh. He's ready. Easy, big fella. Then let's travel. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed toward Grant's Pass, Ace Wills rapped on the door of a small white house near the edge of town. It was the home of the man from whom he had bought the Grant's Pass journal, the home of an experienced newspaper man, Bob Turner. How do you do, Mrs. Turner? I uh, came to see your husband. Huh? Oh, it's you, uh, Mr. Wills. I see you brought a couple of your henchmen with you. Who is it, Mary? It's Mr. Wills to see you, Bob. Oh, 
traveling with a bodyguard these days, huh, Wills? Timmy, when you sold me a newspaper, you signed an agreement. Do you remember that? You agreed not to re-enter the newspaper business in Grants Pass or any other community within a 50-mile radius. What about it? Just this. What? Why, uh... Well, that's hardly more than a handbill, Wills. A single page of printed matter. Yes, a single page of printed matter for free distribution. And it tells about me and my activities. Yes, it does, Wills. It objects to your appointment of Tumbleweed Jackson to succeed Sheriff Martin. It hints that there's room for suspicion of murder and the death of all three of our recent sheriffs. Martin, it... I bought you up because I didn't like the things you said about me. Now I find you've been printing things like this and handing them around, trying to keep the people stirred up. How do you know my husband's the one who's printing those handbills? Well, suppose I tell you I don't know anything about the origin of those circulars. I'd call you a liar. Well, I you... learned the truth before I came here. You've got a small printing press down in your cyclone cellar. I got the information from the man who brought your paper supply from the station. Oh. And uh, I came to make sure that there'll be no more handbills at this time. Come on in, boys. Now, oh, just a minute, Wells. Hey, you can't... Come on uh, through the house until you find the printing press and then smash yeah. it up. Oh, no, no. Come on, Blake. This is right in our line. You can't come in here. Who can't? Oh. Get him again. Right. Oh, Bob. Oh. Bob. Oh. Oh. You can't do this. All right, I'll hold it, boys. Let me go. Come on, Blake. Let me go, he's well. Let's find that print. Help. 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 Stop fighting. We'll have to tell you. Let me go, Jimmy. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. That printer's mad. You three, get over there. Keep an eye on them, Toto. If I more fighting, we'll accommodate them. Uh, me watch them. Oh, thank goodness you came. Even though you're masked, I'm grateful to you. Let me see how badly your husband's hurt. It, it was knocked out. That is, Wills. Yes. I thought so. They came here. Bob had a little printing press. They were going to smash it up. And what we do with them, Kimasabi? Wills, you and your friends get out of here and stay out. We'll discuss this matter later. Yeah, mister. We sure will discuss it later. Mass men aren't popular around this town, especially ones who knock me around. Oh, get out. You too. I'm going, I'm going. Let me help you. Oh. I don't know who you are, mister. But... Your husband does. And he knows I'm a friend. Uh, that's right, Mary. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, you're conscious. Are you badly hurt? I'll be all right in a minute. As soon as the room stops going around. Get some water for him, Tonto, will you? Ah, uh, let me get it. Tonto. Tonto. That name's familiar. Mary, I've told you stories about this masked man. Remember the silver bullets? Oh, Bob, you mean... He's the him. Lone Ranger. Oh, my head. Just take it easy for a few minutes, Bob. Then you can tell me what's been happening here in Grant's Pass. During the next half hour, Bob Turner told the masked man how he had been forced to choose between selling out his paper to Ace Wills or having it completely destroyed by the ruffians who worked for Wills. Wills has just about taken over Grant's Pass. I know blame well he had the sheriffs killed. And he got me out of business so I couldn't keep the people informed about his underhanded dealings. Bob, there's a small print and press in the cellar. He distributed a handbill. And when Wills saw it, he came here with a couple of his men. They were going to smash everything. You came just in time. You see, Wills has to control just about everything in town to protect his cattle thieving. Cattle thieving? Yeah, he's gone into rustling in a big way. I see. Grant's Pass is a stopover place on the trail to the North Country. Wills gets friendly with the herd drivers that come to the cafe, learns where herds are being moved, and his men go and get the longhorns. Where do they take the stolen cattle, Bob? Nobody knows, except the gang. I see. They have a hideout somewhere. No telling where it is. Ah, it's no use, though. You can't do anything. Wills is too strong. You only get killed for trying. Bob, uh, what about the sheriffs? Wills had to get rid of three of them before he managed to get old Tumbleweed appointed. Old well, Tumbleweed Jackson's too old and useless to cause Wills any trouble. But as the sheriff, he does have authority. Ah, authority's no good if he can't use it. If he'd try to use it, he'd get the same as the other lawman got, and he knows it. He has the authority to appoint a deputy, Bob. That's the job I want. Yeah, but what can you do? Well, on the way here, I passed a cattleman. 
fellow named Lige Larkin. He's moving north with 1,200 head, and he's planning to stop over in Grant's Pass. Him maybe reach here tonight, huh? That's right, Tonto. Oh, what about it? If we could get the sheriff to cooperate and persuade him to make me a deputy... Sure, I'd that to... can be arranged all right. I'll handle Tumbleweed. He'll do anything I suggest. Good enough. Oh, uh, can you get 10 or 12 honest men who will fight to clean up this town? Sure. And we might be able to give Ace Wills the biggest surprise he's ever had. That evening found Will still raging over the manner in which the masked man had handled him. In his cafe, he found it hard to mask his feelings with a fixed smile and a congenial manner. Hey, Ace, yes. look over at that table. One of his men whispered to him, and he moved to a table where an old man sat. Well, stranger. They uh, tell me you're driving your herd north. I reckon they told you right. My name's Lige Larkin. My name's Wills. You, uh... Handling a big herd? Twelve hundred head. You want to be careful. There's been a pack of outlaws operating around here. Well, we're watching out. The last time a herd was put through Longhorn Hollow, it was raided. That's a dangerous route. It is, huh? Yeah, I thought I'd better tell you as long as you're a stranger in this country. We're trying to prevent any more cattle robberies. It gives a section a bad name. Thanks, Mr. Wills, for telling me. That's all right. Is, uh... Is your cattle grazing now? Yep. Now, if you haven't put it to graze too far from here, I can show you how to avoid the holler. Well, it's not far, only about seven miles east on the range. Oh. How, uh, how many men have you? Uh, Twelve. In just a minute, I'll get a pencil and paper and show you a route. Well, that'll be right friendly of you, Mr. Will. Well, excuse me for a minute. Ace Wills didn't suspect that Lige Larkin was acting on instructions from Bob Turner in accordance with the plan of the Lone Ranger. The masked man was outside the cafe at that very moment. He stood with the old sheriff, Tumbleweed Jackson, and Bob Turner. Oh, Dad right it, mister. I, I hope I didn't make no mistake in making you a deputy. I'll sure be in trouble with Ace Wills. We'll handle the trouble, Sheriff. Tumbleweed, you know what happened to the last three sheriffs. Yes. They didn't last long, and neither will you. Unless we rid this town of Wills and his gang. I said I'd go along with you, Bob, and so I will. But I can't help worrying. Wait, wait. Look in there. Wills is talking to one of his henchmen. I can see him. Now, as soon as that man leaves, you walk in and do as I told you. Now, remember, Pete, you'll have 1,200 head to move, and there'll be about a dozen men on guard. Get the boys together and take care of that cattle right away while I entertain Larkin. Right, right boss. You can depend on me. <laughs> oh, say, Jake. Yeah? You and Bleak helped me keep that old cattleman entertained for the rest of the night, huh? Sure, oh, boss. Pete went out to get the boys and move his cattle to the hideout. Good. Well, that's fine. Hey, Mr. Wills! Mr. Wills! It's tumbleweed. What's the matter, Sheriff? I didn't have a chance to get here to tell you until just now. A man come into my office a while ago and he made me swear him in as a deputy and give him a badge. I didn't have no choice. I had to do it. Mask and all. Mask? He wore a mask over his face. Yeah, that mask, man. Yeah. Look here, tumbleweed, you old fool. When I think you need a deputy, I'll tell you who to appoint. Hey, I couldn't help it. Honest, I couldn't. Hey, 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 hey boss. Hey, there he is, the mask man. That's the critter. All right, you're covered. I'll get him. Hey, what the... That's a warning. Don't finish your draw. We've got a dozen men with him, and there's Turner. I've backed my men of this town who want to see law and order. We're putting Wills, Bleak, and Jake Hastings under arrest. I'm the law here. Wills, you can argue that in court. All right, take their guns. What's the charge? You know what you and your pals did to Bob Turner? The charge is assault and battery. I'll get going. Mister, you and every man with you will pay heavy for every minute I spend in jail. I've got friends, lots of them. They'll see that I'm free in no time. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. One of Will's henchmen named Bleak was in the cell adjoining the sheriff's office, while half a block away, Ace Wills and Jake were in the small stone jail. After his fury subsided, Wills became cool and calculating. We'll be out of here in the morning, Jake. What's the idea of it? That masked man making himself a deputy sheriff. I won't hold that against old Tumbleweed. He had to swear the masked man in. He had no choice. I know, but... But you and Bleak and me charged with beating up Bob Turner. Yeah. Turner will think he got off mighty easy when he sees the next things that happened to him. When Pete gets back in the morning, he'll hear about this. Then he'll bring the gang? Right. Why did they put the two of us here and Bleak over in the sheriff's office? I don't know. I hope the gang gets Larkin's cattle rounded up. Do they have to go far? No. Nah. They're probably in view of the cattle right now. Say, boss, there's one thing that's had me worried. What if someone follows Pete, then follows the boys and the cattle to the hideout? <laughs> now, Jake, you needn't worry about that. They keep their back trail well guarded until the last of the cattle is out of sight. At that moment, Pete and the gang of rustlers who worked for Ace Wills rolled to the top of a small rise that overlooked a vast expanse of plain where hundreds of cattle grazed in the moonlight. There's a cattle, boys. See any of the riders? I don't see a sign of them. You know what to do when you see them. Drill them. Right. We're going to drive that stock to the usual hideout? That's right. Rain up. Rain up, boys. Who? 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 Now what? Anyone see any of the cowhands? No. No sign of them. Maybe they're on the other side of the critters. Maybe they figured the Longhorns could take care of themselves and went into town for the night. Boys, go right in shooting and stampede that herd. Drive them to the hideout. Lefty, Tim, Kenny, yeah. you ride in in the north. The rest of us will take care of this side. Right. If you see anyone, shoot them. Ready? Ready. Now yeah, let's get going. Fan out! <laughs> The band of shouting outlaws raced toward the herd with guns barking. The peacefully grazing herd became a thundering stampede of terror-stricken cattle that was held in a close mass of bobbing longhorns by the hard-riding outlaws. There had been no resistance. The cowhands who had been in charge of the herd were nowhere to be seen. In the meantime, Bob Turner and the Lone Ranger were in the sheriff's office with bewildered old Tumbleweed Jackson. Beyond a door of steel bars, the man named Bleak sat in his cell, an eager listener to the conversation. Oh, I don't know what's to come of me after this. Mr. Wills is going to be mighty mad at me. Wills is in jail, Tumbleweed. As long as he's there, he can't hurt you. I know, but... Well, look, Turner. Yeah? You know how Wills has got this town in the palm of his hand. What'll happen? I'll tell you. In the morning, his men will hear about this. Maybe we'll jail his men. Yeah? What are the charges? You can't prove a thing against them. We'll see. Uh, They'll get Wills out, and even if they don't, he'll go free when he goes on trial. What if he does have to pay a fine? He'll pay it, and then he'll start in to get it back. Tumbleweed, you know as well as I do that the Wills gang steals cattle. Dad rat it all, Turner, knowing it is one thing and proving it's another. You can't just say a man's a thief. You got to prove it. There's no proof. Turner, we'll get out and let Tumbleweed think it over. Whatever you say. Now, look here. Won't you please turn in that deputy badge and get clear of Grant's Pass? When I'm finished. <laughs> My finish is going to come long before that. Keep an eye on your prisoner, Tumbleweed. If he gets out, he'll hold you responsible. Oh, what am I into? Why did I ever take this job as sheriff? Hey, deputy, you with the mask. Well? Look, there's room in the regular jail for three men. Why can't you put Bleak in with Ace and Jake? Why leave him here where I got to guard him? Well, it would be two cars with three of them in one cell. We'll be around in a couple of hours, Tumbleweed. We'll leave you as guard. Then you can get some sleep. But, but, oh, my sakes alive. You just wait, Tumbleweed. Now, Bleak, you leave me be. 
Maybe if you unlock this barred door, I'll talk Wills into letting you stay alive. I won't listen to you. Now stop talking to me. We're going to get out anyway, Tumbleweed. You know that, don't you? I don't know a thing. Look, you keep me here and you'll sure be sorry for it. I reckon you know what'll happen to you. I won't listen to you. I'm hanged if I'll listen. What can Turner or that masked man do if you let me out? Nothing. You can tell them I escaped. They're not going to shoot you for it. But you keep me here and you'll be shot as sure as my name is Bleak. Stop talking, I tell you. Stop it. <laughs> Why don't you try to make me stop? Ah, you're lit, Tumbleweed. Uh... And you know it. Ah. So we got company. What do you want? I don't know as you know me. I'm sort of a stranger in town. Lige Larkin's the name. Well, what do you want here? Well, nothing, Sheriff. I was just sent over with some hot coffee for you. Here, I reckon it'll taste real good. Oh, it sure will. It sure enough will. I was coming this way, and they asked me to fetch it to you. I've got a herd of cattle near town that I'm a take it north. No! <laughs> That'll hold you. <laughs> that was done neat. <laughs> hey, hey, who are you? I'm just following orders, that's all. Yeah, I saw you talking to Ace Wills in the cafe. That's right. Mr. Wills was right fine to me. He warned me about outlaws nearby. I reckon the masked man was in with him, Will. Yeah, sure. Anyhow, when I heard that Ace Wills was jailed, I figured I'd help him out. Uh, just a second and I'll have that door unlocked. You won't be sorry for this. I got the key here. One second now. You got to get to the hideout as fast as you can. Hideout? Yep, your horse is saddled and waiting out in the back of this building. Yeah, but what about Ace Wills and Jake? I was told to send you to the hideout as fast as you could get there. That's all I know. All right. There you are. You better get your gun and travel fast. All right. There's my gun and belt right here in the desk. I'll stay here and make sure the sheriff stays where he is. Well, if he starts showing signs of getting conscious, wrap him again. <laughs> After leaving the sheriff's office, Bleak hurried to the rear of the building where his horse was saddled and waiting, then headed north for the hills. He made his way through a narrow pass between sheer walls, a pass that led into a wide, well-watered valley where countless steers were grazing in the moonlight. Lights gleamed from the windows of a cabin at the valley's edge. Ho, 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 ho! It was there that Bleak found his gang. Where'd you come from? The sheriff's office. I've been locked up there. Locked up? Yeah. Where's Ace Wills and Jake? Are they here? No, the last I saw of Ace was in the cafe. He gave me orders. What are you locked up for? Uh, it's because that old fool is sheriff. Tumbleweed? Yeah. You appointed a new deputy. Masked man at that. He was working with Turner. Well, they come into the cafe with a dozen or more men from town. And they jugged the three of us for wrecking the newspaper office. You mean the boss is in jail? That's what I'm saying. The boss is in jail. But I thought he got out by this time. Not that we know of. We just got here with a new lot of cattle. How'd you get out? An old cowman came and cracked Tumbleweed in the head. And let you out? Yeah. I was told to get here fast, so I came. Who was the cowman? I don't know. Said he had a lot of cattle that he was moving north. So I'm talking to Ace in the cafe. Ace warned him about the outlaws around here. Hold on. I wonder if he's the owner of the critters we just brought in. You mean... White mustache and hair? Yeah, that's the man. Hang it all. There's something mighty funny about this. Why'd he let you go free? Well, uh, Pete, he didn't know his cattle was to be stolen. Well, no, but... Hey, look. Don't reach for guns. You here. Oh! The rest of you leave your guns alone. The Lone Ranger's is in charge here, and we're back in his place. The Lone Ranger? Speak, you fool. They let you out so you'd show him where the hideout was. As a matter of fact, you were allowed to steal the cattle. So you'd bring it here. Come in, Lloyd. Thought I was on your side, didn't you, Bleak? You, the ornery two-horned polecat. Didn't you rustlers think it was mighty strange there weren't any guards on those longhorns? So that's it. Framed. That's what we were. I didn't knock the sheriff out, Bleak. In fact, he's right here with us. I hear it coming inside to speak for myself. You thought I'd kowtow to A. Swills like every other snake in town. Thought I was too old and worthless to be a good sheriff. Well, I'm going to be known as the sheriff that cleaned out the crooks in Grant's Pass. Maybe you crooks will savvy the situation better when I tell you that I went into Will's Cafe tonight because Bob Turner asked me to. He said he needed help in carrying out a plan of the Lone Rangers. And by thunder, it sure worked out just right. That's what it did, all right. Turner, now that you've found Will's hideout, you'll probably find a lot of cattle that's been stolen from other ranches. We'll check the brands and notify the owners. Now, wait just a second. Listen to me, Larkin. You too, Sheriff. We can fix things up. 
Ace Wills has plenty of cash. He'll pay for any trouble he's caused anyone. And you'd better pay attention to a proposition. <laughs> you can't arrest all of us. The jail won't hold us. Thanks, right. A thunderation. Where in town can you hold as many men as you got here? Now, be sensible. There's no use talking to the sheriff or to Larkin or to Turner or anyone else. Out of their hands. Furthermore, they'll not have to worry about finding a jail to hold you men. How's that? What do you mean? I hear some horsemen, and I think Tunnel's leading them. I left marks along the trail for him to follow. Well, that's Tunnel, all right. You crooks, just wait a couple of seconds. You're due to get the surprise of your life. What do you mean by that, Larkin? Those critters of mine that you stole. I reckon you'll sure be sorry you stole that particular mess of Longhorns. Hey, how many men are stopping outside? Who all is there? Come in, Tunnel. Uh-huh. He comes. Soldiers outside. Soldiers? Good. Blake, that cattle had been sold to the Army. What? You stole the property of the United States. The troopers will take charge. Well, the Army cattle. Come in, soldiers. There you are. There's your prisoners. <laughs> it's the Army prison for you. <laughs> Won't Ace be surprised when he learns that he's a prisoner of Uncle Sam? <laughs> oh, here, Tumbleweed. Here's a deputy badge. Now, hold on. Hold on there. Stop that mask, man. I got to talk him into staying as my deputy sheriff. He's worth a hundred regular deputies. Stop him. You don't need us now, Tumbleweed. Come on, fill the Get him up. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 